chapter 17, please. What? Is that what he's looking at? She's shocked. John chapter 17, please. Um, I am very excited to share this with you guys today. Um, the Lord woke me up this morning, um, and I, I'm, I'm trying to find this, um, trying to find this, this move where when I wake up, I'm, I'm in the Father's will, and all it is is a pinner of really sitting here. Believe it what it is. Straight two, buddy. I know it's the donuts. Go oh, no, the donuts safe. So, clean up on aisle one again. Anyway. So, John chapter 17. Um, I am going to label, well, the Lord has given me a name for this message. And it is, hello, my name is. Now. Yeah, I felt the same. Oh. oh, no, 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 wait. The song, I didn't get it till this morning after he downloaded it. Oh, really? So you can imagine my wife's craziness when she sees her husband crying. Oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. That, that song, that song. We'll see it. He said you need a grace this morning. I'll tell you what. Verse 1. These things Jesus spoke, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said. Now, before we get into this, this is the last thing, the last set of things that Jesus is going to say. He's in the garden, and he's praying. Okay? I'm going to say this now, but he's going to connect it later. He's praying for you. Individually, you are on his heart in this moment. Okay? Now watch. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may, be, may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all mankind, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. Amen. Now, how do we have eternal life? Simply, purely by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God sent him as a sacrifice on our behalf so that we can have a relationship with God. Let's not make it complicated. That's Amen. what it is. Amen. Okay? And you're going to literally see this when we come down to verse number 8. Now watch. Verse 3. This is eternal life that they may what? No. 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 Mm. no. 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 This is eternal life that they may what? No. How about get somewhere? <laughs> I need you to hear God's heart first and foremost right up front. Your life isn't about making something for yourself. We all know that, right? Amen. Your life is about getting to know your father. Amen. I have I have news for you. We're gonna spend eternity doing it. <laughs> and it's never gonna be exhausted. Amen. The longing that you have here pales, I promise you, in comparison to what he has for you there. Listen, I would not be standing up here 
speaking this word, if I didn't believe myself personally, it wasn't true. And I can't say it's true if it's not true in my life. Do I learn as I go along the way, like I did this morning just a few hours ago? Absolutely. But all of that growth is for your good. To take you to a place where you what? You understand who you are in him, who you have, and now who he says that you are. Because it can't be about what other people say that you are. We've talked about that ad nauseum. Is that the right word? Yes, that is. Oh. Whoa. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chef. I need to practice that one. Somebody must be praying a guard over my mouth. Amen? <laughs> Verse 4. I glorify you. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now look. In verse 3, he says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Jesus came to the earth to work? Yes. yes. He came to work so you didn't have to. Amen. Yes. Okay? Now watch. Verse 5. And now, glorify thou me... Together with yourself, Father, with the glory which I had. Now watch this. This is awesome. With the glory which I had with you before the world was. So now Jesus is pulling it out of context. Say, hey, Dad, remember when we were, I want, I can't wait to have that back. Because Jesus lowered himself. Look, he didn't lose his character. He, he, he lowered himself. He emptied himself of his power. So that you can understand that the very same Jesus that walked on the earth is an identical picture of you. Yes. Well, no, because we don't do healing signs and wonders. You want to know why? Because you don't believe. That's right. You don't allow Father to what? Do his work through you. Amen. That's preposterous. We can't heal. Want to make a bet? <laughs> I don't bet. Okay. Amen. Now, verse 6. This is important that you see this, okay? Because a lot of people want to... These are churchy words. When I was reading this this morning, Dad said, man, that's a churchy word. And I said, well, yes, it is. Well, what do you do with a churchy word? You break it down into something you can understand, right? All right? Now, because we can talk about justification, sanctification, and glorification. You're going, that's a lot of shun, 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 shun. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. Only a couple of times. <laughs> I thought you would, Peter Ann. I saw it coming. She saw it coming. Okay, now watch. Jesus says, I manifested your name to the men whom you gave me. Now watch this. The word manifested literally means to show openly or to make apparent. So now, Jesus openly showed and made apparent what? Your what? Coming out of the bedroom, going toward my office, I heard Dad chuckle. Now, I know when he chuckles, he has something for me. It's funny to him, but it hasn't been made funny to me yet. So as I'm turning the, com the corner, I hear this chuckle, and I'm like, he's like, what did we just get done talking about? Okay. What is the one thing that you love to do when you get to the Old Testament and you see somebody's name? name? I dig in and I find out, why are you looking for their name, General? Why do you look for their name? Because their name says something about who they are. If I say Hitler, descriptions will come to your mind of hatred, murder, right? Mm -hmm. If I say a sports figure, Maybe what sport they play or what they've accomplished comes to your mind. But if I say God, now watch, God has established it that your name establishes your identity. Kind of like my name, it's Gerald. It comes from a German word that means he who rules by the sword. I love that name. <laughs> he who rules by the sword, not the two-edged sword. But your name identifies, supposed to identify, who you are. Your name isn't happenstance, right? But now watch. Jesus manifested God's name. 
Now listen. Jesus didn't walk around from town to town with a sign that said, Yahweh, and just went. He openly displayed God's name. Now watch. He openly displayed God's character. Amen. So everywhere that Jesus went, everybody knew, oh, this guy's different. Yep. Hallelujah. How do you know that he's different? You can see it in his eyes. There's something different. Sound familiar? Hang on. This gets a whole lot better. I manifested your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and you gave them to me. Jesus hasn't died yet, folks. Watch what he says next. And they, what? Have kept my, thy word. That's a really strange thing for Jesus to say. Especially if the word is associated with the rules that we're supposed to follow. How could they have kept his word? So there must be something more. And there is, and we'll come to it. But I, what I want you to see right now is he said past tense. They have, right? And he's going to talk about the one that got away, but that's for scripture purposes. Now watch. Keep going. Verse 7. Now, they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me, I have given to them. Now watch this. Watch how they did it. They received, they received the word. They received them and true, truly understand, number two, they truly understand that I came forth from you. And number three, they believed that you sent me. Wow. Why do we make salvation jump through this hoop, get through there, put that, do this. Please make sure your house is in order. Where is that in the scripture? You know the only thing they really talk about in a house is get the leaven out. Get the leaven out of the house. What does leaven represent? Sin. Sin. There you go. Problem. Get it out of your house. So now, verse 9. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world. But for those whom you have given me, for they are mine. Now stop here for a second, everybody. And I need you to transition over to verse 20. Because if you're not careful and you're reading this verse, you're going to think, oh, he's only talking about the disciples, so that leaves me out of it. <laughs> what? Verse 20. Because it's almost like Holy Spirit said, Psst, we're going to put this in there because somebody's going to say, oh, it's only for them. Verse 20, I do not ask in behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their words. How did you get to know the word of God? Somebody told you. Where did that somebody come from? That somebody came from one of those 11 dudes, I promise you. Yeah. Amen. And those 11 dudes came from that one man. Gosh, it's almost like we're all going back to the same person. Amen. Oh, that's Gary. We have the same lineage. Maybe the old Adam really is dead. He is. And the new Adam is alive. Amen. But now maybe the new Adam has a new name. Hey, not now, please. <laughs> please. All right, so now come back to verse 10. So now look, he's talking to everybody. He's talking about the disciples. We talk about you too, all right? And all things that are mine are yours. I'm just going to let you see right back there. <laughs> Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to God. Means that. <gasps> and yours are mine. Jeez. And I have been glorified in them. Verse 11. And I am no more in the world. Now look, he has already detached himself from where he is. 
He already has a focus on where he's going. I am no more in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come up to thee. Now, what he's doing is he's explaining to the Father what's about to happen. He's showing you his <coughs> mindset. Where is, he th where is his mindset? The cross. No. His mindset is not the cross. Where is his mindset? On us. On us. But how? Through him. See, Jesus prayed to the Father. The Father hears the Son's prayer because the Son is faithful. So whatever the Son asks in the Father's name, the Son receives. Yes? Amen. Because yeah. he's faithful. Now, <laughs> come back to verse 9 for a second. Because Jesus is asking for something. He's yeah, taking yeah. a long time. He's doing one of my prayers where he starts out. He goes, he goes, rabbit hole. Okay, wait, Dad. Yeah, let's look. This is what I'm asking for. Not just for them, but for everybody that's my child. That's my sibling. Watch this. Verse 11. I'm no more in the world, and yet, I come, they, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to thee. Here we go. Holy Father. Watch this. Keep them in thy name. I don't Jesus doesn't care about your stature. He doesn't care about your bank account. He doesn't care about any of those things. He cares that you understand this. That, that God would keep you in his name. Watch this. Keep you in his character. I have to ask this question. Are we in Christ? Yes. Then everything that is in Christ is in us. Amen. Keep them in your name. The name which you have given me. Now if... God's name given to Jesus is a name that they share, but now Jesus wants to share a name with us? Amen. Why would he do that? Because he's trying to make a point. <laughs> I'm trying really. The name which you have given me, that they may be what? That they may be one. Listen, he's going to talk about unity later, and we'll, we'll come across that when it's time, but not right now. Verse 12, while I was with them, I was keeping them. There's that word again. Keeping them in your name, which you have given me. And I guarded them, and that word is actually a connection to the word keeping. And not one of them made a mistake, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Somebody have something wrong with that interpretation? Yeah. What's it say? Perish. Oh, let's read it again. I'm sorry. I must have read it wrong. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. I guarded them, and not one of them made a mistake. No. Say it again. Not one of them perished, except the one which was according to Scripture. Why didn't he talk about Peterson's name? Because it was gone. Because he's not focused on mistakes. He's making a very important point. You're not going to hear any negativity from Jesus. Not today. It's not going to happen. Not today. You're not hearing negativity from Jesus. If you are, you're listening to the wrong voice. Amen. I promise you. Amen. I promise you. Amen. Now watch. Verse 13. But now I come to thee. And these things I speak in the world that they may have joy made full in themselves. So listen, when you're reading and a word pops out like manifest and Dad says, stop and look, I know we're in for it, right? This word filled up literally means crammed. Now when I'm talking about crammed, I'm not talking about like flour cram. You know how you, no, I'm talking about it is literally, the force of this word is literally, listen to me, 
so filled up there's no room for anything else. Well, trash compact ones. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about your joy. <laughs> now, watch. If I'm so full of joy, whenever God brings something else on me, be it good or bad, but I'm so full of joy, what's that thing going to do? It's just going to overflow. Amen. Anything that God brings to me is a blessing. Amen. One way or the other. Oh, I've hard times, Pastor. So have I. But God has moved you, molded you, and made you into the person that you are today. I don't like my path. Without your path, you're not who you are today. Woo! You can't get here until you go through that. Israel didn't come out of Egypt and say, Bam! Promised land! No, they went through the Red Sea, they got out in the wilderness, and they decided they were going to grumble. They were going to complain. Yes, David, you have hanging your head up all morning. Well, when you started getting out of this thing, protect? Great word. That's the focus. Okay, if your Bible says keep, so I'm going to change that word to protect, to guard, to look over. Now watch this. Verse 11. Holy Father, protect them where? In your name. How hard do you think that is? I don't know. Come on, let's throw it out there. How hard do you think it's going to be for God to protect you in his name? Simple. Uh, simple. Very, very simple. simple. He's the one that made me. So we don't have to worry about that, right? No. So that's a done deal. So we don't have to worry about anything anymore, right? Because there should be no fear because perfect love casts out all fear because we're in perfect love. Because we can't go in and out. You're in. Be anxious for nothing. Ah, the deception is starting to become clearer and clearer. <laughs> Watch what happens now. All right? Now, go to verse 12. While I was with them, I was keeping them. I was guarding over them. I was watching them. And then he says later, and I guarded them. Same word. Okay, same focus of that word in verse number 12. And now in verse 15, keep them from it, protect them from the evil one. Wow, that's amazing. But we're not done yet. 
There's one more key in this passage. Somebody want to find it? It's in between verses 1 and 9. When you find it, raise your hand. Great. Verse what? Between one and nine. Yeah, kept. It says, they were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Go to verse six. You ready? Verse verse six. I manifested my name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and you gave them to me, and they have what? Same word. Do you think Jesus obeyed the Father by protecting the men? Yes. Past tense. You and the disciples. He says, you kept his word. How do I keep his word? Let me, let me change that question because it's the wrong question to ask and that's the question that gets answered. How do I keep his word? How do I keep his love? How do I keep it? Wrong question. How can you ever get out? There you, you go. Can. You can't. See, you're asking the wrong question. How do I stay in his love? How can I get out of his love? Do you I seriously think I'm going to stumble out? He's going to say, oh, there he goes. I lost him. Where you go, he goes. Why? Because you're connected with him. Amen. Not according to what you say or what you've done by what Jesus is telling the Father. Hey, God, those ones that you gave me, we're now eternally connected. And wherever I go, they go. And wherever they go, I go. Amen. Because wherever I go, you go. Wherever they go, you go. One more thing. <laughs> So the first thing the fathers ask, we find, we find in verse 11, to protect them in your name. Verse number 15, protect them from the evil one. Don't be afraid of the enemy. Please, don't be afraid of him. He's, he's just, he's got no teeth. He's just got gums. <laughs> Kick him in the mouth. Verse 17, sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. So now this is the third thing that Jesus is asking. Protect him, protect him, sanctify him. What does sanctify mean? Sanctify means to make holy. Now watch this. Keep going. As you did send me into the world, I have, past tense, sent them into the world. Listen. You can't not go with Jesus. I'm going to say that again. You can't not go with Jesus. Listen, when you're walking out the door, he's got a coat that you put on. He's a person inside of you. Wherever you go, that's where he is. You don't have to walk through the door and say, all right, let's do this thing, Jesus. Activate. No. He's already here. He is already with you. Wherever you go, that's Amen. where Christ is. Amen. See? But... If you are under the deceived mindset that I have to somehow manifest God to come into my life, you are going to struggle, I promise you. What did Jesus do to manifest God in his life? Nothing but obey. According to what the Father said, that's what he did. People want to see Jesus as somebody unattainable. I'm telling you, when you meet him face to face, you'll understand he's your brother. He is your God. But he is your brother. Right. And the love that he has for you goes beyond anything that you could possibly imagine. <sighs> Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. And you did send me into the world. I also send them into the world. Verse 19. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself. What is happening in this passage is this dude lost his mind. This is Jesus speaking. Why would he have to sanctify himself? For our sake. But it says something about sin and There's a whole lot of you sinners in here. He needs all he can get. Because there's something we're missing. There's a peace. 
When Jesus is talking about sanctification, sanctification is always a change. It's always a change. It's always literally a change from one state to a state of holiness. That's what sanctification gets you. So as a believer in Christ, you are being sanctified. You will be completely and totally sanctified. I promise you, God's already said it. Whatever he gives you, it's irrevocable. He's not going to say, you're saved, not you're saved. You're saved, not you're saved. You're saved, no. When God says you will be glorified, you will be glorified Amen. one day. When God says this will come to pass, it will come to pass. If not, Amen. what are we doing here? Amen. Let's just go home and quit. No. No, that's no. a terrible idea. <laughs> it is a terrible idea. But watch. You can't go home. <laughs> and for the sakes, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. And they themselves also be sanctified in truth. Punch this pile past Jesus. What is truth? And truth stood in front of him. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, truth. and the light. No man comes to the Father, if I am in you, then you are in me. Okay, Father, if they are in me, uh, they are also in you. If truth is in me, then it has to be in you. Amen. Okay, I can't do it. Thank you, Jesus! That's so all I got to say. <laughs> Because I know where I come from, and man, I'm grateful that he's in my life. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Jesus is connecting you being sanctified in truth just as Jesus sanctifies himself. If you are connected to Jesus, there can be no separation. Amen. What is the whole point of this prayer? He's trying to give you the truth. Be obedient. You want to know what the truth is? Uh, Here it is. Verse, verse number... 19, and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they themselves, put yourself in there, also may be sanctified, watch, in the truth of who they are in me. That sure beats knowing about God. Amen. Who are you in him? Go to heaven. So much more than that. Amen. Look, there has to come a time when you have to connect the dots here. If Jesus is literally drawing you into this passage, and he is, and he's connecting you with the fact that you need to understand the truth of who you are, you know why you don't know who you are? Because I am not Gerald, who committed adultery back in 1990, whatever. I am a son of the Most High God. Amen. 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 When you look at yourself, what do you say? Hello, I'm... Do you define yourself by a situation that you're going through? Do you define yourself that people live in your home that irritate you too much? And all you can do is talk about them. Why are you talking about them? What's talking about him? Yeah. Separate yourself from the things that are not of God. Even if they're in my own house? Absolutely. Yeah. Most assuredly... Men, we know that full well. See, you're separate. You're not the same. Jesus already told you in here. They're in the world, but they're not of it. How can I not be of the world, but be in it? Because my identity is not found in what the world said Amen. about me. Amen, that's right. My identity is found in what he has said about me. Now listen, you can take this passage and tear it apart for years and years and years, and I promise you, you're going to come back to the very one and only conclusion there is. God loves you so much, he changed your name. Amen. I'll give you one of these. It's a name tag. 
think Steph has. No shame tag. A no shame tag? Is that what I got? You don't need one right now. Now, what I'm giving you is a name tag. On this name tag, you don't have to write on it right now. I'd actually prefer you not write it right now. Down. One, two, thank you. Everybody got one? Oh, I forgot the worship. Oh, I forgot the middle, folks. Hold on a minute. Beauty before age. Middle. Middle. You're missing one. Wait a minute. Are you going to spill something on it? Uh, this is important to me. Me, no? Send the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to put you on the team. Okay. All right, now. Verse 22. Hang on to these. God just wants you to hold on to them. Verse 22. And the glory which you have given me, I have given to them. Look at that name tag. Just look at the name tag. Just look at the empty space and just hear what he's saying. Listen. In the glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be perfected. Guess what? Telios, complete in unity, that the world may know that you sent me that you love them. Woo! <laughs> and watch this. Even as you love me. Even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given to me, be with me where I am in order that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. And I have made your name known to them. And will make it known through them, that the love wherewith you loved me may be in them, and I in them. Hello. My name is his. That is the word that he gave me. Amen. And I want you to take time and I want you to pray. It doesn't have to be now. It could be later. But I want you to understand, first and foremost, you have a new name. You are not your past. You're not what you're going through, I promise. Listen, in the, in the snap of a finger, in the blink of an eye, we all could be out of here. And are we seriously going to be concerned about the different circumstances? Because somebody may be saying something to me. Listen. I wasn't going to share this, but I'm going to. I heard back from my daughter, Jasandra. Asked her if we could reconnect, asked her if she would come. And all I got was no comma thanks, period. She responded. This is, this is, this is a, a relationship that as you reach out and you try to mend, sometimes it's just entrenched. And I really got upset about it. I really got upset. And then the Lord said, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, what Pastor Craig has to say. So I came in here and he says, hey, Jesus said, if you don't care for me more than your daughters and your, that's all I heard. But what God was showing me was I was coming to the point where I was focusing so much on making it right with her that I was walking away from where I was supposed to be. Why? Because I was forgetting my name. I'm not that person who made that mistake who has to right that wrong anymore. Now, I know they want to right wrong, 
I know they do. They want justification. They want vindication. I understand all that. But according to the word of God, that has to be swept clean. And if that has to be swept clean, then I can't live there anymore. Because I'm literally standing and looking at an empty room. I have to know who my, what my name is. I have to know that it's been changed. I have to understand that my name is forever connected to his. And that can never change. I can't not have his name. When you were born into a family, you take the name of the person you were born to. Man or girl. Boy or man or boy or woman. You are connected forever to that person. That blood rose, throws, flows through your veins. I don't know my father. I don't know my mother. All of us can go back to Adam and Eve. I promise. Amen. And Adam and Eve go back to one who said, man and woman. We all go back to the father. Every single last one of us. Whether we know the Christ or whether we have no idea who he is. Whether we praise the Lord or whether we blaspheme him like he's a devil. It doesn't matter. We all belong to him. God has given you a new name. You need to seize that. You need to grab that. You need to hold that. That needs to become a part of your identity. Why? He's already said it. Because he's sending you out into the world that they may know him. Amen. They know him when they see you. Amen. That's right. And so then we go back to the door. Do I have everything in order so that I can go through this day? Have I accounted for every single mishap, something that can go wrong? When you get to that point, do me a favor. Play Jesus. Right. I, listen, this is literally something, it's, it's cool. Play Jesus. So when you're at the door and you start freaking out, you're like, all right, let me play Jesus. I can't believe I gotta go and feed these people. He wouldn't say that. I don't want to go it's hot. It's cold. I'm going to be up there for eight hours? Praying? Who wants to do that? Mm, I do. Amen. I do. Amen. 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 But isn't it sad, though, that most of the world would say otherwise? Ten minutes is too much. Pray in tongues, folks. Pray in tongues. That's what they're for. What? What did he say? Pray in Use your spirit language. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. That's dishes, man. Love doing dishes. All right. Verse 26. I have made your name known to them and will make it known. Now watch. He's not saying making it known to you per se. He is going to make his name known to you again. Why? Because your name is not just what... Why would my name not just be one name? Because your name displays your character. God's two weeks ago, we put up the character of Christ. Anybody got that list? It's pretty long. Pretty cool. You do? Can you read some of it? This, so a couple weeks ago, Pastor Craig came in and said, I got no notes. This is what God wants me to do. He put Christ on one side, he put Satan on the other. And we talked about the characteristics of Christ. Okay? Love, humility, reproof, holiness, courage, power, life, sanctification, patience, mercy, truth. Those are all the characteristics of Christ. Because that's his name. Right. So what are your characteristics? All those. Hope. Reproof, holiness, courage, power, love, kindness, grace, patience, truth. Your name is different. Amen. You are not a person trying to get your name has been changed. The quicker you catch on to that, the more you'll be able to understand what happens next. Verse 26, I've made known your name to them. And will make it known that the love wherewith you love me may be in them and I in them. Folks, it's all about relationship. That is what the Lord wants. It's 
not about doing stuff. It's not about putting on a show. It's not about any of those things. It's not about having your life in order. I don't know why he keeps hammering this. This, this is the focus of what he said to me. I want you to tell them that I am keeping them. Woo! I want you to tell them that I am keeping them. Father, what does keeping them mean? I want you to tell them I'm protecting them. I want you to tell them that I got my eyes locked on them. I want you to tell them that they are my masterpiece. I love them tremendously and they are full of potential. I want you to tell them that I am going to protect them. I'm going to watch over them. And I am not going to allow the enemy to come near them. Amen. And if he tries, they'll say, Bink, you don't belong here. Forever loser. In the name of Jesus. Be gone. Peace out. For what purpose? Be gone. For us Amen. to become something that's yeah, yeah. never been God's plan to, to make us into something that looks good to the world. What God did was an internal work that looks beautiful to him. Yeah. And then he displays his glory out through you. Amen. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't work through me. Liar. Yes, he does. I promise you he does. Yes, he yes does. sir. Uh, <laughs> what is the phrase? Is this a test? <laughs> Come on, kids. We went over this. Come on, kids. We went over this. What is the first Love the Lord your God with all your heart. All your soul, all your mind, and your strength. I gave you that, and I told you some more. By the way, <laughs> I gave you this to hold on to. This is what some preachers like to call a, a, a sermon, a multi-century sermon, where you have something tangible that you can take with you. But I really want you to take this with you, either to school or work, wherever you go. Get along with the Lord and put a name on there. But listen, it can't be Gerald. It can't be your name because that's not your name anymore. What, what is, the, what is the, the focus of the life of a believer? God. That's it. Love. That's who he is. We are not put on this earth to try to be the big next big thing. If you turn into the next big thing, it's because God turned you into the next big thing and he's going to use that. But listen to me, don't hold on to that next big thing because that next big thing could be God in a heartbeat. Did he spill something now? No, no. not just that. That's just us today. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, that's what I've been telling you, that God gave you a purpose. And if it's only to save one person on earth, you will have fulfilled that purpose. If you've done your job, then have the all blank grand glory that for one person you saved. I need to cry. What I have said, she did it to the said What I have said was, you could go your entire life, you know, following God, and you talk to one person, and your entire purpose was to talk to that one person, and they go on to glory. But that's still your purpose fulfilled. That's what Christ had for you. <laughs> and if you can be content with that, that God has provided that one opportunity for you, you are far more alone than you would believe. Exactly. <laughs> because what, what do we want to do? Oh, I got one. I need ten. Let me go get five. Let me go get twenty. Really, if it is just the one, that's good enough. Listen. If everybody would do that, you were yeah. Be you, at one point in time, you were the one. Yeah, amen. Right. I was the one. Yes. But then he looked and he says, "Ooh, Dad, I need to teach him." He's got a new name. Mm -hmm. You have a new name. So, let me finish with this. This morning, I got a message, or uh, this morning a message was shared to me about a song that apparently Miss Candace shared yesterday. Okay? And Miss Darlene said, ooh, listen to this. When she started playing the song, I lost it. And you're going to see why here in just a minute. I'm going to get out your mind. I would like you to just take this time, pray, Just be with that. Hey, can I get another bank tag? I, I ruined mine. Ooh. Of course you did. There's always one. Well, I was Jesus. Oh, I don't even have this joke. You were just a kid. I wear my clothes. I don't care what anybody says.
thought of our Jesus, we just come to you, Lord. And we know how special we are to you, Lord, that you have chosen us, that we are your people, Lord. And Lord, that when we wake up in the morning, just knowing that we're going to walk out that door, Lord, that we have that power, Lord, that is in us, Lord, yes. and that we have to command it, Lord. Lord, we are your people. And we know our name. We know our name in you, Lord. And I'm just asking you to wrap everybody here, people, and just show them that purpose. And that though the devil is a liar, yes. he is a liar. Yes. Because you've chosen us. Mm. And we are yours. And Lord, we just pray this, Lord, and we thank you every day for your mighty power, Lord. 